Yo, what it do guys and welcome back to another Warframe Academy video. Now in this video we're going to be looking at the term shield gating. What is it? What does it mean? And how to use it effectively? Whether you be a new player or a returning player back to Warframe, pay attention. This is very important towards you guys as you really want to understand its terminology and how to benefit from it mostly. So I'm going to go and open up this notepad so that you guys have a bit of a visual aid to go ahead and see what's going on here. Now, let's go ahead and explain the old method of shields and what shields used to do in Warframe. Now, the old method would basically be, let's say your Warframe had 100 shields. Let's say that you had 100 health. Let's say that the enemy just shot you, just one bullet, one shot, and it's going to deal 1000 damage to you. The result would be you dead. There's nothing that would happen there. You would just basically die. You would have a total of 200 in terms of protection and it does 1000. Now, the new method is, let's say that you have exactly the same situation, 200 against 1000, the result is you're actually left with 100 health. So what happens? The shields now consume the damage and then they offer invulnerability difference on the percentage of your shields left. So it will consume all of the damage in that one blow and it won't attack your HP until it removes your shields directly. But when your shields are removed, based on the percentage, you're going to get different things. So, full shields, 100%. This basically will give you 1.3 seconds of invulnerability, which means any damage that comes through in the next 1.3 seconds will do nothing to you. Now, if you had some shields anywhere between the value of 1 to 99%, you'll get 0.3 seconds of invulnerability. So the idea is you want to try and remain at full shields as often as possible, because you will get more seconds of invulnerability to go ahead and survive, right? Now there is a different uh, scenario here, and this is kind of more of a niche one, but there is Hildren's passive, and there's also Pronotia's first... Uh, Pronotia? There's also Protea's first ability, Grenade Fan, and this will offer 3 seconds of invulnerability when your shields are either down or on Hildren, or when you've picked up uh, Protea's Grenade Fan uh, as an ally or as Protea, and you lose your shields, you'll then get 3 seconds of vulnerability. So Protea can be very very good for this meta as well. So what can we do with this? Knowing all of this, what can we do with it? So let's go and have a little look at something that exists in the game where there's a very cheeky method for this. So let's go and look at a decaying dragon key. Now this is something that you can put in your gear, your gear wheel, and the decaying dragon key will give you a 75% debuff to your shields. Now naturally, you would never want that, right? Uh, there are four different dragon keys, all doing different forms of debuff to health, shields, movement, and damage, uh, but the decaying one's actually useful for us. So let's say that we have the same regen value. Let's just say that the regeneration rate of our shields from zero shields um, all the way up to a million, whatever, uh, what are we going to reach quicker? Are we going to reach the number 50 quicker or are we going to reach the number 500 quicker? Well, in this case, we'll just ask a different question. What is the smaller number here? 50 or 500? Well, 50 is smaller. So therefore, 50 is faster to reach. But because 50 is faster to reach, do you see where we're going with this? It basically means we get more seconds of invulnerability. Why have 500 shields when 50 shields does the job and it will go and protect you for longer? So the idea is we want to try and get to full shields as quick as possible. Therefore, we got the 1.3 seconds of vulnerability. Lower total shields, they actually benefit you better. Now you can pair this with other things like rolling guards, which is a mod that you can put on your warframes. And whenever you roll, whenever you dodge, or whenever you basically press shift, so dodge, dash, roll, whatever the warframe you're playing on, you actually get three seconds of invulnerability. So this would increase your invulnerability to a total of 4.3 seconds stacking. Right? So you want to try and, do, try and do them one after the other. When you notice that you've lost all your shields, you're immune, then what you want to go and do is roll after that. So you won't always get the exact full 4.3, but for the most part, you're protecting yourself for quite a fair bit of time. Keep in mind, Rolling Guard does have a 7 second cooldown though, so you can't overly keep chaining and abusing it like absolute crazy. But this is where other things will go ahead and come into attention, and this is where you can then go ahead and use the Rolling Guard to protect yourself whilst you have no shields to go ahead and use abilities or uh, to use mods to go ahead and get your shields back. So you've got three seconds to then try and go and get your shields back will give you an extra 1.3 seconds of vulnerability. Do you see how you can now chain these together? So you, your shields go down to zero, um, you got 1.3, you then roll, you got an extra three, you use some abilities, your shields are back to full, you come out of rolling guard in vulnerability, they attack your shields, you go back down to 1.3, hopefully with the 1.3 uh, twice and with the rolling guards, you should go and uh, exceed 
towards the seven, which means that as soon as you come out of the first rolling guards in towards the second invulnerability here, you will then go ahead and get a second rolling guard chained together. This will basically just allow you to keep chaining invulnerabilities together. Okay, now your biggest weakness here is going to be Toxin Proc, because Toxin Proc will go ahead and bypass your shields and they will attack your health directly. Therefore, your shields mean absolutely nothing to you. So as for the abilities and the mods that you can go and pair this with, uh, using things like Hildren's Pillage, and uh, now in the game we actually have something called the Helmet System, which is uh, something that you unlock around MR8 and you'll talk to people in Deimos, I believe it's Sun in the family, the Oricon family in Deimos, and you can go ahead and buy yourself the Helmet uh, segment, uh, the Charger segment that it's going you can install on your ship and you can actually start subsuming warframes which is basically feeding them to the helmet to go ahead and learn particular abilities from the warframes now all of these abilities are set and i do have a video on this where if you guys want to learn more you can always go and check my warframe helmet video uh, there's a list of everything in there and an explanation as to how the helmet works but one warframe actually gives you an ability called pillage here and that's that's hildren pillage basically means whenever you go and cast the ability if you happen to uh, have any enemies with armor or shields nearby um, it, you will strip the armor, you will strip the shields, and you will actually go ahead and get shields back for you. So this is really, really useful because as you could imagine, if I'm in the free second of rolling guards and I've got no shields, I can then just pillage, get all my shields back, and then I've also got, then got the one, so as soon as I come out of rolling guard, I already have this back. Do you see what I mean? So you can chain them together. Uh, there are other warframes out there as well, just as an example, maybe like Mag, Her Crush, and Her Polarize, or even things like Proteus Fan. Um, now, there are also uh, mods inside the game as well that can also help this out. So not all Warframes you're going to want to go and put Hildren's Pillage on, for example. Sometimes you're just going to want to go and use mods uh, and abilities that you can spam. So, for example, if I take something like Saren and her second ability, Molt, it's like an instantaneous cast, right? As soon as you press Molt, she sheds her skin and the ability's there, basically having very little animation towards it. Well, what does that mean? It basically means I can spam that ability and with mods like Brief Respite, which is an aura, and with the Augur mod set, um, basically casting abilities give shields uh, back to you per cast on the amount of energy somewhat consumed. So the idea is if you have very little action animation uh, for what you're using, you can then go ahead and get shields back nice and quick. So you can see how you can chain all of this together. Now, where is this mostly used and where is shield gating mostly used uh, within Warframe? It's mostly used on Warframes that don't have uh, forms of crowd control or forms of damage reduction. So I'll just use an example here, although she does have a form of crowd control, just bear with me, but someone like Banshee. Now, Banshee is notorious for being a great damage dealer, but her survivability is incredibly subpar. It's very, very lackluster. Well, what the the wonderful thing about this is is that I can abuse and synergize uh, the invulnerability from having full shields to the key and dragon key I could use the helmet system I can compare all of, I can pair all of this together and I can also go and add in a mod like rolling guards roll together so forth you get the idea I chain all of this stuff and now all of a sudden Banshee's alive and she's alive and she's got the damage to keep her scaling anyways. So now all she needed was the survivability. Well, lo and behold, Shield Gaten has made someone like Banshee just even more deadly and even more dangerous than what she already was. So now you can start to understand all of that. Now, if you are gonna do a method like this as well, uh, shout out to a couple of Arcanes here, things like Barrier and things like Aegis. Uh, there's also a mod on your Sentinel called Guardian. Uh, whenever you run out of shields, Guardian, the uh, your sentinel will go ahead or your mower will go ahead and recharge your shield straight back to full so it's one thing if you have hundreds uh, or thousands of shields something like hildren would you would you use shield gating with hildren you can but for the most part you might as well just stack all of the shields together because you'll generally be okay she's got so much shield there and because shield naturally has innate damage reduction on it you will just be okay anyways because you've got a large 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 pool to work with with hildren but for other warframes where they can't get as much shield uh, shields on them like a big shield pool because you can only use mods like redirection and so forth um yeah they're, they're not going to do as well as what someone like uh, Hildren will. But again, uh, look at things like Aegis. If Aegis happens to proc in this shield gate meta, as long as Aegis is ticking and procking, you will always basically stay alive. 
because Aegis won't really go ahead and let you hit that invulnerability period because you're always getting shields back. It's, it is a shield regeneration and within Warframe there's like two different forms of shield regeneration. There's a passive shield regeneration when out of combat your shields will go ahead and regen. So there are mods like Fast Deflection or, or something like that that you can put on Warframes to go ahead and increase your shield regen. But then there's also active mods where even when you're in combat when they proc something like arcane ages it will go ahead and make sure that you get shields on back on return even though you're taking damage whereas the passive shield regeneration for things like fast deflection um that doesn't that's not in combat that's only when you're out of combat so use things like ages use things like arcane barrier use dragon keys use rolling guards and if you ever had an issue with a squishy warframe right now this is one of the best if not arguably the best form of survival in Warframe to this current day. I hope this video has helped you. I hope I've explained it very well. Now, if you do have any questions, please go and leave them in the comments section below and I will try and get around to them to try and help you guys understand it. I'm hoping I've covered everything here. Sorry that I don't have big showcases or so forth. The idea is just to talk about it so that you guys can fully understand what's going on, how it works and how to put it into effect. On top of that, if you did like this, um, consider sharing it with a friend and consider hitting the like button. It would be great to go and know that this guide here, this very short guide here, can go ahead and help people. And if you happen to, like I said, if you happen to know anybody out there who doesn't understand your game, then share the video with them because it will help me as well. And it will also help them. Well, fingers crossed it does. But until the next video, guys, thank you so much for being here today. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and I will catch you guys again in the next video.